Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be speaking about the 1921S Morgan Silver Dollar. We're going to be going over all the interesting things about it, like the VAMs, which is characteristics, a few of the coins that will, ha will have them, and they'll be worth a lot more. There's going to be some mint errors to go over, where something went wrong during the striking of the coin, the proofs, the Zerby special strikes, the ones that look a little bit different, but they're worth tens of thousands, and then just the regular history and context of the coin. 1921, of course, is the the last year that the Morgan dollars produced, there's a bunch of reasons that they get made from 1878 to 1904, including adding a little bit of inflation to an economy that had been deflationary for a long time and supporting some of the silver interests. Well, those interests uh, get supported again in 1921 after World War I. There's some legislation passed that requires the Pittman Act requiring the um, government to basically purchase hundreds of millions of ounces of silver and coin them into new silver coins. A lot of that gets sent over over 250 million coins to Great Britain so that they can fulfill some um, promises that they'd made in regards to the currency. But a lot of the 1921 Morgan dollars are coined out of other Morgan dollars, which there was not a need for more of them that have been melted just to be recoined for this purpose. So sort of a little bit silly and very like politics ticky and sort of bureaucratic a lot of uh it's not the most efficient system i'll put it that way but uh, it had been such a long time that they had destroyed the hubs that were used to make the dies that then strike the coins so they had to redo them and as a result the new hubs were a little bit more crudely made they certainly have worse relief you can't really see the breast feathers very well um, even on really nice high condition coins um, the relief is lower it's just the quality and the overall eye appeal of these coins are a lot worse than their 1878 to 1904 counterparts. Um, the S mint marks are super, super tiny. Uh, that's just a feature on them that is interesting. They're like micro mint marks. And the coin was thought to be rare initially, but there were so many of these produced. Um, there were 21.695 million, one of the highest totals in all of Morgan dollars that when they were released in thousand coin bags from the 1930s to the 1950s, they became no rarer than anything else. However, because of the strike quality being so poor, while there are a fair amount of like lower grade uncirculated ones, a ton of these were just used as currency, maybe in casinos in the West. Uh, the West did prefer using um, silver dollars as opposed to paper ones. Um, and the 1921 Morgans, like in really better condition, are going to all accelerate in value well beyond like a regular common date just because the combination again of the quality of the strike but also the fact that a lot of them circulated and i'll get into it at the end but a man named Ferran zerbi commissioned proof like coins um after the peace dollar there was a little bit of a mix-up obviously the peace dollar comes in uh in 1921 mass produced in 1922 and runs until 1935 replacing the morgan design but here's some of the values you can see there's massive upside going from 63 to 64 and then a big jump again 64 to 65 and 65 to 66 so with a really good eye for quality you can do really well um, purchasing these and upgrading them it's it's a coin where there is a big difference um, in terms of the different conditions but a lot of them are going to be 62 63 just uh, between the luster and the strike everything combining there are some things you should look for though here's the thorn head um, it's most easily seen as like this thorn that extends from the leaf in morgan's head uh, sort of right up here to the i guess top of the bonnet or the ribbon um, and this, you can see AU53 sold for 375. There's not a ton of price history, and there's a ton of different thorn heads. You can see that zoomed out a little bit more, and then there uh, later on in the um, sort of the life of this die, there's a big thorn that protrudes from the top as well. Um, then when we get later, you know, the top seems to be gone, but there's a super strong uh, thorn connecting again the leaf and the top of that bonnet. And then you can also see uh, some looks like like a die gouge or something in the denticles. Um, up top that gets polished off and eventually uh, then we're down to this new one that appears between the N and then as well as the I and the B uh, and these sell for good money 700 bucks in a 2011 uh, Mint State 62 auction 
Um, then it later gets on the, it's sort of filed down. You can see um, previously it was strong in the end, then it gets lesser, but then there's also the connecting from I to B and then the huge amount of die polishing lines. Um, this one's 350 bucks. It was a long time putting this presentation together. Then we see um, continuing along on that pattern with the I and the B almost connected, plus a big spike in the denticles on the other side of the coin. Um, and then we see again a thorn head where it's sort of protruding the back. You can see the um, thorn still clearly connecting in what looks like maple leaves um, in, the, in the top. Um, and then there's later on um, sort of uh, just continuation. So always looking at the top of the head. Uh, and then you can see here slightly later on, but it still remains. So um, there's also two more VAMs that I want to cover. The, and these are not super, super valuable, but this is like a die scratch from B to U. Um, and, you know, it's pretty prominent. Then there's also the BU die scratch where there's no S uh, or the S, you know, you can see it, but it's almost like abraded away. And those are just the last two VAMs I want to focus on. Um, there's also some errors, some of the most spectacular mint errors like this off center one where it just came between the planchets at the wrong time or the, uh, the die, excuse me, not the planchet, but came between the dies and didn't fully get in the striking chamber and this is the result most of those were pulled aside this one was double struck in collar and actually rotated so you can see the remnants how it did rotate uh, where the morgan used to be sort of along this line um, and you can see the wreath sort of extending here it was rotated a significant amount over three thousand dollars was paid for that coin um, and this did circulate so it shows like any au dollar you should be looking closely because people might just not have looked closely and there's some really interesting things a lot of clash marks on these i don't think that there's any real vams um, showing clash marks where the um dies come together without the planchet being between them um, there's also this fabulous 25 percent off center um, strike and then we have a double struck coin so the strike initially happens you can see the protrusion on the top of the one and the s micro s mint mark um, but then it doesn't uh, get you know doesn't fully eject from the chamber and probably caused an indent on some coin um, or possibly not no it doesn't look like it because um, the the coin is struck on both sides so anyways sold for eleven thousand five hundred really really gorgeous coin then we have the zerbi special strike so 1921 he had been instrumental and was a important figure in coin collecting and he was in san francisco went and was excited to get the new dies to see some peace dollars struck but they ended up not being peace dollar dies instead they're morgan silver dollars so he says well, maybe you could sort of ease my disappointment by preparing some proof-like or special strike 1921s Morgan dollars for Zerby. So he gets 25 of them, and he gives them to his coin-collecting friends. Um, now they are $100,000 coins. Um, the condition, you know, the, the grade difference split between 64 and 65 obviously matters, but these are really, really nice coins. Presumably some of them have been lost um, but this is one of the top coins out there to be on the lookout for. Now, there are some proof-like coins that can get passed off as, um, you know, special strike from Zerbi. I think the best thing to do would be to purchase these in certified condition as opposed to purchasing something raw as a Zerbi special strike because that just would lead to a lot of um, potential for a big monetary loss. But any proof like 1921S is going to be quite valuable if you can get that designation at a grading company. Um, so if you can buy something you're confident is proof like and it's not being sold as a Zerbi special strike, then you, by all means go ahead if it's the right price. But this is one of the legendary coins in U.S. coin collecting, so it's exciting to be able to talk about it today. Um, and, you know, there's a lot to look for on these, whether it's the AU50 double struck ones that might be out there or this whole thorn headed BU die scratch um, varieties, ton to look after. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like the video, comment, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I also have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and some other social media platforms. You can also go to my main channel website, treasuretownyt.com, to learn more about the channel and sort of stay in contact. I also will eventually host all of these videos on coinsmetalscards.com, which will be both news, marketplace, and coin information. I do have the goal of eventually getting pretty much every U.S coin, date, mint mark, denomination 
on the channel with a similar video to the one that you just watched, and that will likely all be hosted there. Uh, and then I also have treasuretowncoins.com, which is sort of my coin dealing wing, coin dealing only entity that is a little bit less focused on content production. So thank you so much, and I'll look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos. I also have videos that are not just the date uh, mint mark denomination recap in this format, uh, so you can check some of those out, and I'll, yeah, have fun seeing you there.